I cannot. I, I'm sorry. This keeps happening to me, and it keeps catching me off guard. Zoom is always like, this meeting is being recorded right when you <laughs> record, and it freaks me out. But anyway, hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Deja, and I'm here with my dear friend, Che Williams, who is a very talented filmmaker. And we're going to dive into some really great conversation and discussion all about essentially astrology as a study um, and how people approach it and even some different like aversions that non-astrologers or people outside of the astrology community may have um, when approaching astrology content online. Uh, so we're really excited about this chat. Um, but yeah, I'm going to let Che introduce himself. If you have anything that you want to tell people about, if you know, like some of your chart, if you want to share, you can, if you don't, don't worry about it. Or maybe don't share anything. And then people guess in, in the comments, in the people comments, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then like that, like I'll, that. we'll, we'll, maybe we'll drop we'll, the, we'll drop it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So my name but is yeah. Che. I've known Deja for a little while now. Um, I am not by any means an astrologer, an astrology aficionado. I went to a liberal arts school, so that's my, you know, foray into astrology. I lived with nine femmes of color last year, so I, I know, or two years ago, so I know a lot about it by accident. So I, I'm definitely not by any means, but I know Deja, I like her content. And you just want to get into some of this, you know, astrology information, disinformation being disseminated on uh, the social media. Definitely, definitely. No, I'm, I'm really excited for this chat because, and honestly, I feel like it's true Genesis began back, for me, I feel like the, the, the call came when you texted me that time mm -hmm. um, and you were like, I feel like maybe, maybe like you can create some, some content of something about like maybe just the misconceptions of astrology. And then I started writing like a little mm -hmm. mini essay on it. And then I was like, why are you writing? You're not gonna understand this, sorry. But like, I'm like, why are you writing Deja? You have Mercury and Sag, super debilitated. Writing is hard for you. And then I was like, you have a whole YouTube channel for this. Why don't you just like do this as a video? But then I was like, ah, I don't wanna keep talking by myself. I love talking with my friends. And then I was like, wait a second, but Che texted me about this. Why don't I chat with Che? So I'm really excited. Um, I think you have really good questions. Um, and if I remember your chart correctly in my brain, I'm thinking about the birthdays of charts of people that I know that are born around you. I, the placements make a lot of sense if, I'm, if my years are right. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really excited. Um, we're gonna dive into things. We're gonna get to the, the deep, the nitty gritty. Um, yeah. So where, what do you think, let's just like go straight to the bottom. What do you feel like is your biggest thing that you are confused about or that turns you off or that you, yeah, that you're, yeah, confused about or whatever the case may be about astrology? Or do you feel like there's something that's like, the most um, prominent uh, point of confusion that you may have about it in your life generally, or maybe start with what you know about it. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good place to start. So what I know about it, so going before I went to college, I definitely knew, like, you know, basic, like, sun sign, you know, like, I'm a Virgo, you know, I knew all my family, you know, like, my sisters, my brother, my parents, I knew all their sun signs. But I didn't know, you know, it was a sign. I just thought that was your, you know, that was your, your zodiac. That was it. Like, mm -hmm. and kind of like in a, in the same way that we all know, kind of like our Chinese, our Chinese year. You know what I mean? Like you're the tiger. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of like, like a cool little talking point. Oh, I'm here the tiger. He's, you're the bull. Like, okay, whatever. And then you kind of move on with your life. Like, it's not, it definitely, I definitely didn't think much about it besides for the fact that I was born at a certain time. Right. Um, and that was cool. It was neat. Um, and then, you know, I get into college and everybody's on it and it's like you're like thrown into it like um you meet somebody and they're like oh you know like oh what's up i'm che oh i know all about you i've read your chart it's like what's up? I, like you haven't even said your name yet right you know what i mean and like mm. you know like so you, so that type of information it's kind of like so funny story about this i get to college and i'm like you know like 
kicking it like just with some friends. Someone asked me like what time I was born. I really just they were just like making conversation. I was like, oh, I think around like that, uh, you know, da 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 this time, you know. Obviously, like they knew where I was from, so they like I didn't know. I didn't think much of it. Right. Then I come to find out my chart has been siphoned around the whole the whole college. You yeah. know, like oh my gosh, there's this guy Che. He's from North. Uh, so here's my chart, and it's everywhere. So then I kind of started paying attention into okay, what's a then you get into like the the rising and the moon and like then you know so you, you kind of get introduced to that but then after that after like those kind of big three there's like a genesis of like it's 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 like like i told you you know deja this it's like it's like scientific it's it's over a lot of people's heads once you get past those big three it's percentages and and you know degrees and it's 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 very very much so confusing and there's like a big gap in terms of like it's either you know like nothing about it like guys i grew up with or you're like deja like there's like like every like 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 what you just said about your mercury and sas it's just like it's a moon i think it has something to do with maybe like i, I don't know i know venus is definitely love and i know there's one with work and there's one with the emmy platonic relationships and all that type of stuff but it's like there, there there's no middle ground and it's it's not accessible on the fact that it's just it's like it's it's like science it's it's like biology mm -hmm. so it's just like if you have like i you know look i did okay in science but definitely i'm not like tuning in to watch you know chemists i'm not going to tune in to watch an astrologer and it's so it's so it's it's never been my cup of tea but it definitely it's interesting on the same fact that i would watch a biology not geo documentary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no i honestly i appreciate that you um are comparing astrology to like science because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will not consider astrological data as being scientific um and and also also mm -hmm. just because it's it's before there was any of these other sciences every like every ancient civilization was using it so that's why you know for me like i studied history in college so i definitely know the historical merit like and and in like you know eastern asia like this is like you know what i mean like people in pakistan and india like their lives are like around astrology their marriages around that they go to people like this is this is major so like i definitely understand that this is not cap there is cap within the astrology community but astrology as it sets is not cap it, there there's 99 percent of it is rooted in some type of you know scientific something that somebody studied for a long time mm -hmm. you know put in a lot of work into it yeah yeah, no, 125%. And that's when I realized that, because I was honestly in the same boat that you were up until undergrad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have always known my sun sign. Um, I was very proud of being a Sagittarius, but like I always felt like it was just a talking point. Mm -hmm. And that's what sun sign astrology primarily mm -hmm. is. It's just like this, this is my personality, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And if you think about even the sun, in our solar system generally mm -hmm. like you can't miss the sun's out shining today because it's bright outside exactly very obvious so i think it makes sense as to why sun sign astrology was so uh predominant but then also when you do look at the whole historical context of like the depth of this tradition up until now you then realize like oh wait no these like ancient people mm -hmm. were like looking up at the stars and tracking the planets for thousands before exactly. the west was even like conceptualized yeah, yeah, yeah. um but you are very correct in the fact that there are people out there who will pick up and this is a thing that we've been talking about that astrologers have been kind of like throwing out there on twitter a lot recently people will pick up one astrology book mm -hmm. or they will have a vague understanding or they think they have a really good understanding of the signs, but in reality, it's actually very vague. Um, and then they think they know, since they know about the 12 signs, they know astrology. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a disservice, honestly, truthfully. Yeah. Like it's, it is truly a disservice to, um, to the tradition. And a lot of the times, you really have to be honest about this because it matters. A lot of the times those people who are just picking up one book and being like, I know everything are white. Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly like, exactly. I feel like a replication of um, the appropriation of culture 
uh, of non-white cultures throughout mm-hmm. history is just being like, oh, look at this thing. I'm going to take it and I'm going to yep. say that I know it all and I'm going to charge so much money for it when exactly. you don't. Yeah, so, this is, all this stuff is rooted in Asian, you know, East Asian, Southern mm-hmm. African, Middle Eastern thought. I mean, so this is really, this is, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not well-versed in it. I'm not saying there's not European you know astrologers in history but this stuff is definitely rooted in that you know middle eastern african asian this is you know in civilizations that are a little bit older than than some others <laughs> no you're so right because it like um the mesopotamians mm-hmm. created the um the zodiac system um but then it was the greeks and in the hellenistic tradition that created um the house system that we have within like birth charts and things of that nature Mm -hmm. and natal charts because before the greeks started using it uh and the romans when they like conquered and all that Mm -hmm. sort of stuff Mm -hmm. and all the planets changed names um they were primarily using this for like doing like king stuff and like Mm -hmm. when Mm -hmm. big events would happen like on a national scale or to somebody really important in their society um astrology was something that was really used for honestly i feel like the preservation of that um uh-huh. elitism in a really yeah, interesting yeah. way um and then it was definitely that whole preservation for the sake of elitism definitely kind of was uh further highlighted once the west got their hands mm-hmm, on it mm-hmm. um so and then there's also other forms of like like astrology, like in, you know, Southern Africa studying, you know, the moon and the sun, like, and, and, and definitely in China, they definitely use, you know, signs from the sun and the moon, like, again, to, to further that elitism, as because last point, education was much more, like, protected, you know, only we could get educated, so like, all this stuff is just, like, it, it passed over through time, and, it, you know, it, it develops into, like, you know, kind of, like, this hard system that we know now. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah, hmm. I don't know like I don't know how to um it's it's like difficult to kind of get people to kind of respect astrology for what it is um even it, it but honestly it's the most difficult like it, I saw this like scale thing that I was like um when you like come upon something new or you're like learning something and at first you think you know everything and you're like super Mm -hmm, egotistical mm -hmm. about it and you're like I know it all and then you kind of like plummet and fall and you realize you don't know anything Anything, (laughs) you're at this like plateau of like I don't know anything Mm -hmm. and it's like how do we how do we like um uh and, and it's probably like a personal practice that we all kind of need to accept within our own lives is when things come to you when new ideas or new systems or new frameworks of thinking come into your life um one how do you like take your time with it which is not even really like Mm -hmm. i'm not saying everybody has to like you know learn it for thousands of years no it's just mainly like (laughs) how do you take your time with being comfortable with what you know you know Mm -hmm, what i mean mm -hmm, and settling into that um versus like just jumping to assumptions um but yeah i don't know if that made any sense yeah no yeah so like how do you you know i think you know i think and i think just in general this is like more of a general point about like social media but i think people are not comfortable with being uncomfortable they're not comfortable you know not knowing so you know like people will like you know, you'll read and, you know, an Instagram PowerPoint and like now you're an expert on, you know, SARS, you know, in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Like, but in fact, it's like, that's the tip of the ice. That's, you know, that's the, you know, what you're talking about, you know, your, your peak. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, you now you know everything. But people are afraid of that plateau and people, including me. I mean, there's, there's so much information out there and it's hard to kind of pick through. It's like picking a movie or like picking a TV show on like Netflix. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, like there's so much out there. It's not like going to the store and this is like, this is the fixed amount of DVDs there are in Blockbuster. Right. Right. This is it. There's no going to Hulu. There's no going to Amazon Prime. Like, there's too much stuff out there, so it becomes overwhelming. And I think 
now like softening that into astrology people are afraid of you know like going down that like rabbit hole because one like you know all of this stuff is frightening you know there's people on you know there's there's people who are like super duper experts and you don't want to get embarrassed because people again on the internet will drag you for not knowing like me right now i'm like oh gosh, you know let me, let me not make sure you know because you know it's str- oh, you know okay. f- f- fans are crazy like like yeah like my sister is a big beyonce fan and this is not you know specific to her but like she is like diehard beehive like she will like she will ride for it. like astrology people the same thing like i'm a yankees fan i will like fight somebody over my sports teams so that's like people like fandom becomes crazy and and social media just i you know just isolates it more because it's it's so you know like it's so distant so like going into like social media like astrology people everybody's an expert everybody read you know a few powerpoints from somebody's story and now they know what's up mm-hmm everybody's Deja the Jovi, you know what I mean? Like, everybody, everybody's an expert. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. And I think that's very, it's, it's really potent right now. Um, and it's so funny, because you mentioned that when everyone's an expert, no one's an expert in our mm-hmm. pre-show chat. Mm-hmm. And I love that quote, because it's just, it's just so on point for the eclipses that we've been getting and this eclipse cycle that we've been having since when did the nodes move into Gemini? I always forget. I'm pretty sure it was like May of 2020 when this like nodal, this eclipse cycle kind of began. Um, and just to kind of like, just dive into that a little bit. Um, go ahead, go those out there who like want to actually hear my take on the eclipses I did one for the Sagittarius one a couple of weeks ago and then I also went live on my Instagram for the Gemini one with my friend so if you're interested go watch and actually, those I have a note about the I found out um social again now, now I'm an expert right um a woman who used to work at my college or maybe um, I don't know the pronouns the person who used to work at my college um posted that to not sh- share pictures of the eclipse because in her culture um they're in Navajo um it's it's sacred and they're not supposed to look at it. Mm-hmm. and um so you know to like maybe put a trigger warning you know if you like you know no one has mm-hmm. any problem with you you know going out and taking pictures like it's, it's fucking cool but like you know like put a trigger warning or something because it's it's not you know you know again this is an ancient culture you know something that you know a lot of us you know in like traditional western cultures might not understand so I think like definitely being cognizant of like you know like this is something that like this is not of you know american culture like american culture as we know it now right. um you know this is so so to just how to be like even though you might be curious or you know you're an expert because you read a powerpoint like to definitely be like cognizant of like yo like this, these are like people's cultures like in yeah. the same way that we respect like you know like no one would come up and be like oh you know the fucking knicks man after the next law <laughs> i mean people respect i mean it's just like people respect that type of stuff it's like so it should be like you know, it should go around, I think. Yeah, no, for sure. I totally agree. And you're totally right. Like, eclipses in ancient ancient and indigenous yeah, cultures were bad omens. People, yeah. you stayed indoors. Yeah. Um, I think that, like, I don't know, I, I, something with, like, Western civilization just, like, is so whenever something happens we have mm-hmm. to like see it yep, you know yep, we yep. have to we have to do it and it's like mm-hmm. not everything is some and this is even like how people approach the eclipses generally people, you're not supposed to do anything you're supposed to just let the energy just be you know like mm-hmm. the this last one that we had the moon was eclipsing the sun so the sun was disappearing and there's these really great pictures of like toronto when the sun when, the moon was moving in front of the sun and the sun's light was literally being uh, consumed or absorbed Mm -hmm. um, by the moon, uh, obstructing that light. Mm -hmm. And that's like, what? Where did the sunlight go? Um, And it's kind of, it's dramatic. You know Mm -hmm, what I mean? mm -hmm. And and I think that sometimes because of our disconnection from the natural world, just generally not even thinking about the stars and the planets and the things that are Mm -hmm. outside of the earth like Mm -hmm. we have been so disconnected and disengaged from the natural cycles of just the earth itself to the point where we don't even or we're rather conditioned to not trust like Mm -hmm. animals and plants and all these things like but we have to trust humans because we somehow have more reasoning Mm -hmm. than 
it's a whole other thing. Exactly. But <laughs> it's just like, I don't, you're right. Like it's, a, it's about kind of respect. And I think that mm-hmm. a lot of the times people don't really have respect for new things generally. Um, and, and I don't think it's like something that people innately don't have respect for new things. I think it's more so the process of us being like uh, living in a very like individual centered white mm-hmm, society mm-hmm. that is very much interested in kind of like pushing out things that aren't supporting white supremacy. So Absolutely. Absolutely. <gasps> but Hmm. And also, like, within a lot of our, like, you know, Judeo-Christian religions, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, the Jewish calendar goes off of, like, the moon. Like, you know, their holidays don't fall on the same day every year. Mm-hmm. Because it's off of, like, a, like that's, that's a form of astrology right there. Like, all that stuff is still in our day-to-day lives. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and, you know, like, um, Chinese New Year is on the same day every year. Mm-hmm. All that type of stuff was just like it, it. It's over a lot of people's heads. Like this stuff is still like you, you can go out rock with astrology and then like go out and like enjoy yourself in Chinatown in New York right. during during Chinese New Year. Like, well, right. there's some astrology in there too. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're so right. You're so right. It's so true. It's it's also like it's interesting when astronomers will be like, oh, this. Who would have known that the moon cycles affect your sleep? And it's like, uh-huh. yeah, astrologers have been saying this. Yeah, for years, like for literally like thousands of years. And it's all written too. It's like, and that, that's what makes it like kind of ridic- ridiculous to me. It's just like this stuff is, it's like, I, so I don't eat pork, right? And I, I tell my friends, I don't eat pork because every like ancient religion says don't eat pork. Yeah. But yet we go out and eat pork. It's like at some point, like ancient people knew something. Like it's just like, <laughs> you just got to just make, yo, like, everybody's saying, and these people weren't talking to each other. There was no phones. They were all saying don't eat it's pork. true. They're all saying don't eat pork. They're all yeah. saying these things about the stars. So it's like that type of stuff is just like, I'm cognizant of it. It's because it's like, if people who didn't communicate with each other are saying similar things, it's it, it's not this is not incidental so you yeah. definitely definitely like tune into that type of stuff for sure for sure and stop eating pork everybody i'm yelling <laughs> <laughs> this is um i honestly i remember this being something that i always feel like i hear you talk about whenever we're together you're yeah. always like this is like your chase psa yes. <laughs> all the time is Yes. do not eat pork <laughs> please stop eating pork and they continue to eat pork like it's just like it's yes. crazy to me like they'll bust down big burgers for bacon it's like all type like bro like you're not doing your body this service like, like and like it's crazy like these guys are like big time athletes and so oh yeah man like, bro like you eat pork like all that all that all that like all that shit goes off the green if you eat pork man yeah. <laughs> i yeah. don't want it, i don't want this to turn into like a louis farrakhan conversation but like i can go on for a long time and i'm not you know pro farrakhan or anything please yo. <laughs> no no i think that's valid i think it's very valid um 125 percent. okay let's see what where do we go next where do you feel like um what do you feel like are some questions that you may have for me as an astrologer um, mm-hmm. And we were talking about some things that we were even talking about in our pre-show chat was like mm-hmm. people being born on or having a similar chart from you, but yeah, 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 yeah. and kind of people hyper identifying with mm-hmm. their chart. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So if we want, yeah. if you want to like touch on that a little bit. Yeah. So I think so. This came up is just like I think people you know who are kind of like astrology fanboys or girls or humans um will get into like this kind of like you know like what kind of like a pissing contest of like you know like my like this means so much to me like and it becomes like their identity and for me you know like a big part of my identity is like one like i'm from new jersey my mother's an immigrant like she's from jamaica specifically so like that type of stuff is like that's that, to me that type of stuff is is my identity you know i went to a boarding school like all that type of stuff, I feel like a lot of people in astrology ignore that and will just say, you know, I'm a bad person because, you know, I, I'm a Capricorn. And, you know, and again, not saying Capricorns are bad people, I don't know. Um, but like, don't let that be your thing. Like, no, like you could be a bad person because, you know what I mean? Like, 
like you know your parent was a fucked up guy you know i'm not sure if you can curse i've been cursing a lot i didn't ask That's if you okay. can curse one here i didn't know if your platform was like you yeah. know young, you know like like the tiktok the tiktok age group um no but um yeah so i i think i think that that kind of turns a lot of people off including myself off it's just like okay like now, now you're doing too much like you know, you drop something. Oh, I'm such, a, I'm such a sad. Just no, oh, you just drop something. Like, you fucked up. You know, like it's okay. Like you just drop some pencils. Like you know, and maybe you know that like cutsiness is a part of being, you know, a sad. You know, mm-hmm. to that you say, not the not the sad thing, but the larger. Yeah, to general, to all of yeah. it. Uh, so I think it's for me personally, all of these things that you kind of identify with would probably come up in your chart. Like that's, that's what's, and I feel like a lot of the times people like address a, your birth chart with it being like a, an identity thing, when in reality, it's more than just identity. And it's, for me, a chart is an approaching a natal chart, the chart of looking at the alignment of the planets at the moment mm-hmm. of your birth relative to where you were born speaks to your life experiences as a whole. Mm -hmm. for your entire life at any point in your life so for example uh i went to an all-girls school that was relatively far away um Mm -hmm. and my dad my stepdad is from uh cameroon Mm -hmm. and so in my own chart there's in okay let me back up a little bit so in your birth chart we have different houses and all that sort Mm -hmm. of stuff Mm -hmm. and all the houses represent different areas of your life Mm -hmm. and then those houses have like little have planets that are rulers that are responsible mm-hmm, mm-hmm. over that area of your life and finding that planet in your chart tells you more detail about that area of your life mm-hmm. so speaking to the all girls school thing that was a even even elementary school for me was far i had to take a journey i had to take mm-hmm. a trip and uh, the ruler of my third house being primary education, pre-K through 12th grade, uh, that planet that rules that house is in the ninth yeah, house. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's okay. Your third house is primary education. Yeah. It, so that's, everybody's third house is primary education. So primary yep. education meaning, how are we defining primary education? Everything before college. Everything before like specialized fields of study and also like technical skills and there's a lot of significations within one house um and i can chat i can continue to chat through the third to like make it to explain it a little more so so so, but is there a college house like so is that what i mean yeah but but that's what i'm saying so what about people who didn't go to college like so so it would show up but so but what's but what so if you were in the streets from from (laughs) from 15 to 21 right you didn't go to school you were about that action Mm-hmm. that's that's what college you know what i mean like what is that like, like i know people out here that are really like they're shooters yeah. they didn't finish high school yeah they so that is their primary and see, so see i don't how we even talking about this is like is like interesting it's like it's crazy that like we would even go like you know, you know it just seems very very like it seems very like like it, it's like kind of classes you know what i mean like that and like that goes kind of back to the accessible like, like i know like a lot of people that i grew up with didn't go to college but yeah. so like to them it's just like okay well this doesn't matter but you know primary education like i didn't really have a primary education if you were in the streets mm-hmm. from 15 to 21 like so that's where it becomes a little a little yeah little muddled for me i understand uh, but i think that like primary education doesn't necessarily have to just be, yeah, be, be school, like those very explicit mm-hmm. things because the third house also like represents primary education within the context of it being a little bit more you kind of have to get a little bit more creative and philosophical when you think about these things because mm-hmm. like if you think about that term on a fundamental level and even if you think about where the third house is, it's at the bottom of your chart. It's at the, it's underneath the horizon. So this area just kind of, not geographically, mm, aesthetically is like below and is of support to this like larger expression of yourself, if that makes any sense. And the third house, uh, it's, it is primary education. It's pre-K through 12 but it doesn't necessarily 
end there or stop there. It's also the house of siblings and like cousins and extended family members and trips and short trips and commutes that you're taking um, routinely. It's like routine spaces that you're visiting and through that routine, you are learning something. When you are interacting with your siblings or when you're interacting with your cousins, you are, you may not like be actively, what's five plus five, but it's more so like, I am kind of learning how to be a child or I'm learning how to like uh, communicate with my siblings. If, even if you think about like litters of animals, like kittens and stuff like that, I always think of like people Whenever they're like, they find kittens on the side of the road and stuff like that, they're like, oh, where's its mother and where's the litter of cats? They need to be around other mm -hmm, cats mm -hmm. so they can learn how to be a cat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of like a, a third house thing because you go to these primary schools. You may not even go to actual like an actual space. Maybe you're just hanging out with your friends that you consider to be like siblings. Mm -hmm. And through those experiences, through the process of hanging out with them multiple times and for just like traveling spaces with them you are learning how to be this version of whoever you're supposed to be at that point of your life um so i definitely i don't think it's like a i don't think the house representations are like a it is going to be exactly like this uh -huh, uh -huh. it's more so like uh the houses are like the scenes they're like the the general landscape or the container that we're kind of looking at things in uh -huh, and uh -huh. figuring out what that experience looks like for you. Because you're right, people, people who are shooters, <laughs> that would probably come up in their chart. Like uh -huh. maybe they have the ruler of their third house um, uh, in detriment for me, that I have the ruler of my third house in detriment in Sagittarius, Mercury and Sag. And, <laughs> and so that process of like, learning how to communicate with other children that honestly it was a little difficult for me I'm not gonna lie like it was um and even like I mean there's a lot there's a lot more nuance and context within that and I don't want to talk about my turn too much detail but um, no yeah I definitely think that that the shooter aspect of it would definitely come up in their chart. Maybe they have Mars in the third, or maybe they're ruler. Or their maybe third. they're just from Newark. I mean, like some of these, like maybe they just have to shoot. Like may, maybe because of circumstances, they just have to shoot. I agree. Maybe there's some people who may be more apt to it, or you know, because of their chart. But some people really just have to. Like maybe you have to shoot. Maybe you, maybe, maybe that's just your life circumstance. Maybe that's just the the the, the card you've been dealt. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's the card that you've been dealt is your chart. No, no, no. Because the, so if you're poor, that's not your chart. Like you're you're, you're you're poor. You're 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 disadvantaged. You're like, but that's, I feel like that can come up in your chart too. That could come up in your chart, but so are we trying to say that people who are poor it's because of their charts because no, they're no, disadvantaged? No. See, that's the thing. I don't think it's. We're not saying that like your life experiences are like this because of your chart. For me, at least, some there may be some astrologers out there who do like think it's like a causation, mm -hmm. but I kind of like approach it more so of being like a correlation or seeing like signs. It's like seeing things that are more so that could speak to this thing. Um, I have Saturn and Aries, and I'm pretty sure everybody born in 1997 has Saturn Saturn in Aries. So wherever Saturn in Aries is in your chart is going to speak to that experience of like trying to figure out how to like exert long-term force or energy or dedication to something, but not really having the resources to actually maintain really long-term uh, uh, projects or things of that nature. I don't know if that's making any sense. Like, Aries is like, I'm doing it all right here and I'm doing it all right now. I have to like establish all this discipline right here, right now. And I have to do it all right now. But Saturn is like <laughs> long-term stuff. We have to think in, think in the future, lay like some groundwork, you know, work in the background. Aries like wants to do it all. I don't know if this is, I don't feel like I'm, I should not have gone down that road because I'm like thinking about it. And I'm like, Deja, why are you talking about that? But what was I speaking about? The, ca the causation. 
and yeah, not totally necessarily yeah. mm-hmm. i don't really think it's that i don't really i wouldn't say you are poor because your chart says so i would more so say poverty or poorness is definitely a manifestation of x placement a potential manifestation of x placement and it doesn't necessarily oh, x mean placement. what's x placement what is what are, what are we what are we substituting x for um anything i think it depends i think it also like so that so depends on the chart it, it's not your circumstances it's not colonization it's not you know it like is. lack of resources in your community because there but can it be, is. There, but, so 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 what you're saying is so we're saying you know the berlin conference that's someone's chart because that's what fucked up africa you know what i mean when europe when europe divvied up you know, Africa with no, you know, type of, you know, causality on, you know, resources and countries. Mm-hmm. That's astrology? Or is that just fucked up God? See you know what I mean? I think it's, so I feel like astrology, it's definitely the, a fucked up guy. And I don't think it is, I don't, I don't think it is astrology that's doing this to us yeah i'm not saying it's like like magic or something like you know yeah. working behind the scenes i'm not trying to even say <laughs> no for sure I, I i think that it's primarily like when that happened let me think of something that's a good example for it all right for example right now there's the the farming uh strikes in india mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um i wouldn't say that that is all of the i'm really like butchering the truth of what's going on in india right now so i'm really sorry mm-hmm. for folks watching this I, this is not i'm sorry um maybe i'll link some try to put some resources below um so that people can dive into this a little more but there has been like extreme tension with farmers being compensated appropriately for their farming and a a lot of astrologers are tracking that alongside the saturn uranus square so there will be planetary configurations that are taking place either in the past or in the present or in the future whatever the case may be and essentially part of our job as astrologers is to look at that and to be like okay what's going on in the sky or what was going on in the sky that kind of has the same tones of what's going on irl so they want to be compensated for their farming and they're kind of making this they're protesting and they're trying to create a change and they're trying to stand up to systems and structures that change uh, that like standing up to something, protesting, fighting for freedom, fighting for liberation is a very Uranian sort of thing. Authority and structure and order is very Saturn. So it, when Saturn and Uranus are in a square with each other and they started making a square in 2020, March of 2020, I'm pretty sure when Saturn first ingressed into Aquarius. Um, and this has been going on all of 2021 and I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a couple of more in 2022 those these themes of like standing up to these structures and to government um for the sake of liberation is a saturn uranus square story but i don't necessarily think that like we're not saying that all of the historical context that has brought us to this point in the present doesn't matter but we can also use the astrology to go back and to look at all of those historical contexts that have brought us to this point and say, all right, what was going on back then? Like, maybe we can look at the planetary alignments of that moment, of those moments to kind of gain more insight or more data as to how these things can manifest again. You know? I, 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 I see that and I think it's a piece of the puzzle just mm-hmm. in the same way geology is a piece of the puzzle or, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, like any other, these other, you know, like biology, you know, and like, mm-hmm. you know, um, climate change, all that type of stuff is a piece of the puzzle. But I think oftentimes it can give people a cop out. You know what I mean? It's just like, this happened because this. So it's just like, no, it, like at the end of the day, someone decided to do this. Like a human decided to do this despite their chart. Like, and I'm not, and again, like I'm not saying this is what you're saying, but 
it, it, it's oftentimes it's like it's it, it's easy to say not easy but it's like it's easier to say you know like this happened because of the charts it's like no it happened because some white dudes decided this would happen regardless of astrology or what the sun was in or whose house was in what they someone just a human decided to do it yeah so and that's that's where again going back to like you know kind of the crux of this conversation where the the people one have an aversion to history like in our or and, and tradition in in our current world so this type of stuff like you know like cap astrology sun sign astrology whatever we want to call it social cap. media astrology. did you just say cap <laughs> and not 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 capricorn like bullshit you know bullshit astrology not un- untruth astrology leads to leads to like this disinformation and people kind of having you know oh you know this happened because of that like no like let's 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 do a little bit more digging and this is like this is like this is a tool in our toolbox astrology mm-hmm. is a tool in our toolbox mm-hmm. and you know i know like you're you're well read in other things that aren't astrology that you know your average fan probably doesn't even know but like and no shade um but it people people will, will will use astrology or whatever their ology is as a crutch to kind of defend their line of thought for sure so that, that that's where like what you were saying like you you definitely lost me at you know the the technical Sorry. side when you were, yeah. were like <laughs> sitting like waxing poetic there but like I, I definitely understood you up until that point yeah yeah no i it's I'm very like not interested in being like things are like this because the astrology said things are like mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. i don't i don't think because then that kind of suggests that our lives and our world exists in a vacuum and like astrology is not above like the world it mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. you know it's supposed to be a as you said a tool in our toolbox mm-hmm. that's kind of helping us guiding us alongside uh of our lives mm-hmm. um and i do definitely no I don't I don't I don't think that anybody uh I, I think it's really harmful and we we're even speaking about this the astrolog in the pre-show chat um the astrologizing when it's unnecessary like yeah, bringing in astrology like somebody was going to do like an astrology astrological delineation of the Israel-Palestine conflict and people were like don't we don't need that right yeah, now man. yeah exactly. like, do you want to go to the parents of dead children and explain the astrology of this time to them no because that's insensitive and it's wrong and you don't do that although israel does have a time chart so i honestly would probably will look at that chart at some point but like nevertheless i'm not about to sit and people were even doing that last year with the murder of george floyd and it's like read the room like shut up and read the room (laughs) It, it, and that goes back to our toolbox like you wouldn't bring a hammer into a situation where you need a screwdriver like sure yeah. like you 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 possibly could make that work you could mm-hmm. bang in that screw and it could fit mm-hmm. but it's not a nail right. you know what I mean like there, there's there's time in place and and I think Definitely. a lot of people and again this is a social media thing this is a cultural thing this is you know like an age thing that we're in of just like kind of just like reading your room you know, and that's like kind of like a double entendre on the fact that we're talking about readings and, you know, like, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for sure. You, you no, really it's... do. Because people um, definitely will take it and use it as a cop-out and as a crutch. Exactly. And I feel like that is irresponsible at the end of the day. Um, and I don't really think many, astro- I don't really think any astrolog- any like professional practicing astrologer would ever encourage anybody to do that um or to kind of although sometimes we have our moments we're like Mm -hmm. oh my phone is being annoying and mercury's retrograde i'm gonna blame it on the mercury retrograde exactly it gets funny you know what i mean the mercury retrograde is 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 the worst one it's it's the worst one because it's the one that's most like involved in like our our our, like the average like millennial gen z like nomenclature like you know mercury's in in micro grades right now and everybody's just kind of We're just kind of just like capping, but it's just like, come on, you don't even know what that means, brother. Yelling. Like, let, let, yeah, let's like let's let, let's cut all that out. Um, <laughs> just like let's cut. Mercury retrograde. I feel like if no one mentioned it, the the lay person who's talking about it wouldn't know. You know, they wouldn't. You know, they're, they're just going off of again, like people like you, like the scientist people. It's just like now everybody's Bill Nye the science guy when Mercury Mercury retrograde happens. 
yelling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they they're pretty like the astrology continues whether mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know the astrology is happening exactly. or not. Exactly. Um, so even before I knew of Mercury retro- before we knew of Mercury mm-hmm. retrogrades as individuals, they were happening. They're happening. And like exactly. they're actually like sometimes I don't think people realize that like retrograde cycles are like those are real. Um <laughs> like it's like ast- actual astronomical events in which mm-hmm. the planets are like seeming to go backwards relative to the earth and stuff like that. But we have lived through them. We lived through three a year. Like we're in one right now. Um, Mercury is going backwards and it ends next week. Yeah. And usually the most potent Mercury retrograde stuff is around the stations. So next, and I'm, I bet money on it every time. Cause it's all, it always happens whether, whether you realize it or not, but since we're having this discussion, just, just keep your eye on it. Next. Are you looking Tuesday. out the window, or is there a chart there? No, there's a, this, this oh, one. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were, I thought you were, like, literally looking at Mercury or something. I said, like, nah, no, this is, like, this is witchcraft. <laughs> like, this is, I don't want any parts of this. <laughs> I was like, nah, this is. No, 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 no. No, I'm not looking up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you can see Mercury sometimes. Mercury is a little funky. They, they move so swiftly, and because of all the retrograde cycles, like, the, uh, their visibility in the sky is like it's funky you can see venus though it's tonight if you go outside and then you look towards the without binoculars the or a telescope you yeah you can see your... all the you can see all seven traditional planets if we're concluding including like the sun and the moon you can see mercury venus mars saturn and jupiter with the naked eye no telescope. so um so why aren't um pluto and, the, and neptune traditional planets why didn't they get because they can't, because we can't see them. So traditional meaning. Oh yes, amazing. Sorry, I'm like saying all these things and I'm like taking I'm it all for that, granted. Right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like obviously, but okay, no. So back to like what we we're talking about at the beginning about people, about the ancients, like having uh-huh. keeping track of all this. Uh-huh. So they were keeping track of like these little dots in the sky that like uh-huh. were doing uh, these things. And they couldn't see things. these other two, so they're not in the tradition. Yeah, so before the invention of the telescope, which Uh was the late 19th century, I want to maybe, no, I think it was the late 18th 18th century. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1700s, yeah. Right. They, that then allowed us to see Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Okay. okay. But before that, like, for all of those thousands and thousands and thousands of years of practicing astrology and astronomy, Mm -hmm. it was just based on sight and, Mm -hmm. like, the act that actual um physical interaction between Mm -hmm. the planets and the earth so yeah and even their sight is something that kind of speaks to just even their like Mm -hmm. archetypal astrology Mm -hmm. it's really interesting but yeah no you can see all of them you can see all of them um and i have a question so if like you know venus is loving all this what would so if i grew up on mars what would earth be to me i mean like what is what is Earth? Like, what does Earth represent? You see, like I have no idea. And then this is a fun question for for you know all your folks in the comments on how, you know, how active the folks are and how you know. So the Pentagon is briefing the Senate this week about extraterrestrials. Mm-hmm. How does this you know astrology? How does this play in with our friends upstairs? You feel me? Like, what is, what what are the stars saying about that? Um, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't like. UFOs are going to I feel like they've always been a thing like I don't think we're alone here on this earth like in this universe by any means but I also don't think that like their appearance is going to alter the cycles of the planetary movements like part of part of this for me is like I have such great trust and faith in this stuff because like Jupiter Saturn Neptune all yeah Neptune Pluto the moon the sun Mercury Mars all of that they've been in cycle they've been orbiting the sun for millions of years Mm -hmm. so the what are like what are we going to do to throw that off like what are you know what I mean like what are these other things 
there's definitely like an astrology of ufos and they'd probably mm -hmm. look at when people are seeing these mm -hmm. ufos um uh, this type of info people would cast charts for that moment when they see mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. then then it's like okay maybe we can figure out something with that but i don't really think that they're going to because the reason i thought of this was because within the next you know 100 to 200 years kids are going to be born on the moon kids are going to be born on you know potentially in 500 years maybe even on, on mars you know what i mean maybe. so like those How does that? Really cool so things. that's what I'm saying. Like you know, those kids are gonna be so different. What would Earth represent? You know, what I mean, I I want you know all the all the Jovian stands to to let me know. I'm yelling. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly, truthfully. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's I, gonna be really interesting, though. Yeah, no, I think so because because like astrology is astrology because it's geocentric yeah. because <laughs> it's the Earth is at the middle. So if then the moon is at the middle then that's a completely different system that that's then would also probably take another thousand years yeah, to really to, figure yeah, out understand um so that would be that I don't would be an why. interesting i'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry i'm going down this rabbit hole but it would be that's interesting okay. to take like a kid who was bored on the moon and like yeah. to bring them back on earth and socialize them on earth and like see that difference yeah i guess we'll see yeah yeah really outer outer world literally outer worldly experiences <laughs> they'd probably have some really funky uh, but i don't even i was about to say they probably have some really funky placements but then i was like they said that wouldn't even be useful <laughs> or usable because you can't use that on the moon um i don't know what would earth represent they have like earth has its own myth in like greek mythology i'm pretty sure it's gaia yeah, yeah. Um, um the the mother of the titans right right yeah, yeah, yeah. so maybe in that sense there would Ooh. then be something maybe that's somehow earth's yeah, representation yeah. but she was an yeah. asshole so I, yeah and i want <laughs> she was oh she definitely was um, i definitely i definitely want to learn more about that that sounds interesting i'm sure there's somebody who, who studied that yeah yeah no but no, I, I definitely do believe that like uh, it's really important to think, think, think critically when you are consuming. A, and I, I feel like I, I always try to say this to people and maybe I haven't said it as explicitly as I should. So I am doing it now. But we all really need to be thinking very critically about the astrology that we're consuming. And I honestly always recommend people to find like find you have astrology. Great. Cool. Find the tradition that you love, whether that's modern astrology, evolutionary astrology, Uranian astrology, traditional astrology, and Hellenistic astrology, which is what I study, or whatever. Find it. Find the people who you trust and who you know are like doing the stuff, even if they're just starting out and they're just learning. Stick with them. You know what I mean? Like, just try to see what they're talking about. And if it hits, mm -hmm. it hits. If it doesn't, maybe that's not the tradition for you. Or maybe astrology just isn't for you generally. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless, critical thinking is always important. Absolutely. And you should never trust anyone, regardless of what you're studying, who encourages you to leave your thinking caps at the door. Mm -hmm. um, that's not smart. Also, people who are astrologers who always try to like, act like they are above astrology and like recommend people to like not care about i saw this tweet it was like who cares about mercury retrograde start that project send that dm da -da 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 -da. and i'm like okay then what are well, shut up yeah like, what's the point of it yeah no like, that's just, exactly like, like why like yeah. well, i don't and if you want to encourage people to do that sure go for it but when mm -hmm. all of that goes awry don't don't yep, yep, don't yep. get mad and it's usually the white ones who are like that but anyway oh. uh sorry to the white practitioners out there this no, it's, it's all love it's, this is all love this is all love this slight is all love. roast <laughs> this is all love but it's necessary do your reading do your reading man do your reading <laughs> you can't go you can't go on the internet and just lie like yeah, you we, can't please just read reading is so important it's so important just pick up a book a couple just a, a couple. couple. They sell a them couple. everywhere. They sell like, them everywhere. 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 Like you can't just 
you can't just like stick at sit, sit with cafe astrology and then you're like i know everything or like n like pull up your ast cafe astrology chart and be like this is all there is to it no like not at all not at definitely all. not but and i'm i'm glad that we agree on that part and i feel like this convo was very fruitful and very enjoyable because um we definitely talked about some good stuff um Absolutely. do you feel like there's anything else that you're like no, I, no, this is this is fruitful. I'm sure there will be some some folks who will let me know more in the comments. Um, respectfully, I'm sure. Uh, no, I, I I think I really learned a lot. Um, definitely about the 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 historical implications of astrology. That was interesting. Didn't know about that. I'm curious to learn more about what Earth could be in astrology, or like I guess that would be a different ology. You know, it would probably be like a different. It's an entirely different study. Um, yeah, and it's just one of those things. It's like think critically about it you just anything Always. that you come across you have to just like think critically about it do your reading talk to folk talk to experts it's it's like i, I think i think people need to show more respect to to you know if, if you study it for a long time you're bound to learn something about it it's like going to school for anything it's you know your your third house you know if you you know <laughs> it's about you know things that you don't think you do frequently right wow i love that <laughs> <laughs> Look at you learning astrology just in here. Just in here, just in here. So cute. Shout out, to the shout, shout out to the shooters, man. Right. Shout out to the shooters, man. <laughs> if you were a shooter and you want me to look at your chart, please let me know because I would Absolutely. love. I, that's that's the thing. Like I love looking at when people have really significant experiences in their life. I just love looking at their chart yeah. and looking at the things that they're experiencing during that time. Because doing that within itself, you learn more about astrology within itself. Because yeah. you personally may think that like a Saturn transit means this to you, but to somebody else, that manifestation may look a little different. Um, and it's not, it's not by chance. There's definitely like techniques and things of that nature that like allow you to see those nuances a little bit more obviously, but um, Nevertheless, it's still really nice when you don't have that technique just to witness those nuances within yourself um, or for yourself, rather. But Facts. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that thank you, great. Che. Of course. Of course. Happy to be on here. Thank you, Deja. Yeah. No, of course. This was so fun. Um, everybody, guess Che's placements in the, in the, descri in the description, in the comments, um, and I'll, we'll verify that um That's but yeah exciting. yeah everyone have a fabulous day time night whatever exactly. um and yeah okay i'm gonna everyone. end the recording good bye <laughs>